on the ground in addressing these challenges. Senator Scott. Thank you, Chairman Brown. That certainly has been a privilege to work with you when we find common ground. They sometimes common ground typically leads to common sense, and we have found some common ground between the two of us. Uh, we also very often, I, I believe, see the same problem. We see different paths to get to the solution. Uh, today is a day where we celebrate bipartisanship, and it may not be every day, but it is at least today. And thank you for working together on consistent witnesses to really understand and appreciate the plight of so many Americans who are suffering through the challenges of home ownership or, or renting. As I said in my earlier comments, uh, I grew up with a mom who worked really hard, 16 hours a day. We rented through high school. We lived with my grandparents when we were younger, uh, with my brother and my mother and I sharing a bed in a bedroom uh, in a rented house. And so the problems that we see aren't recent problems. They span back through history. You think about where we find ourselves. So today we have an opportunity to really try to understand why housing in this country has become so expensive and out of reach to so many families. Federal housing policies have long been disconnected from the economic realities that we face. Recent spending bills have contributed to what I call housing inflation, and I worry that continuing to promote irresponsible federal spending does not address affordable challenges, affordability challenges. In fact, in many ways, it may be the root. Too much money flooding into our market, leading to incredible inflation, and then the Fed tries to figure out how to tamp down inflation by slowing the economy. This administration likes to talk about the need for more affordable housing. But as we all know, talk is cheap and leads to empty promises. For instance, when President Biden ends federal apprenticeship programs that produce high paying jobs in the skilled trades, he shouldn't get to bemoan the lack of construction workers. Or when he fails to address domestic supply chain bottlenecks, he shouldn't feign surprise when construction materials takes months to arrive at job sites. Threatening builders and housing providers with the possibility of rent control will only further increase the gap in housing supply. For decades, Washington's response to housing challenges has simply been more spending. We need to end this cycle and stop spinning our wheels. While the trillions spent on numerous federal housing programs were well intended, I don't doubt that, the net result, however, has made no meaningful and lasting impact on home ownership rates, especially as we see burdensome re regulations push closing costs higher and higher, making the path to home ownership even more difficult. For African American families in particular, the home ownership rate remains unchanged since 1968. Unchanged, the year the Fair Housing Act was signed into law. For too long, assistance programs have served as subsistence programs for the most vulnerable Americans. It's past time to rethink the tax and spend strategies that keep families trapped in generational cycles of poverty and find real solutions to meaningfully impact households breaking that cycle of poverty. Government must begin responsibly helping families rather than doubling down on programs that fail to generate modest results. We need to leverage the successes of American capitalism by encouraging private investment in the housing sector and eliminating needless barriers that artificially restrict supply. And most importantly, we should remember that effective housing policy is driven by communities it is critically important the federal government encourages local solutions to uniquely local problems. These ideas are common sense and shouldn't be controversial. I sincerely believe Republicans and Democrats should be able to find common ground on many of these important matters that impact the American people. I thank Chairman Brown for working together on building this consensus panel, as you said earlier. With that, I would like to welcome the witnesses, and I look forward to your testimony.